Welcome, I'm Paige Stover, here today with Dr. Katherine Seifert, continuing our conversation regarding violence among children and adults in America. Kathy, it seems like every time I pick up a newspaper, there's another school shooting. What's going on in this country? And what do we need to do to uh, sort of intellectually get our heads wrapped around the behavior of these people that are acting out? You know, it's true, and it's really terrible. It breaks my heart every time I see a new school shooting. And we do need to get our heads wrapped around it and find ways to prevent these things from happening. And so we need to understand where it comes from. The majority of children that have become school shooters have had some kind of trauma somewhere in a critical developmental stage that has to do with their ability to relate appropriately to other people. Well, I guess I would say that I think there's a lot of people who have those issues. But in these school shooting cases, something seems to trigger. You know, they could be perfectly normal day before yesterday. Now the guy in Newtown just goes berserk. What, what causes, what triggers the overt acts of violence? Well, let me back up and say they're really not perfectly normal the day before. When we look back, we see all the red flags. But the reality is they hit a flashpoint. They hit a point which they cannot handle on their own because of whatever problems they're experiencing and they explode into extreme violence. And so we have to either give them the skills to deal with these flashpoints or we have to have them be in a protected environment where they're not going to be under extreme stress. So you're suggesting that we have signals that this could be happening if we only knew how to read them. Exactly. We need to know what the signals are, what the red flags are, and then I'm going to take that a step further. We need to have risk reduction plans for youth with red flags so that we don't ever get to the flashpoint or if the flashpoint occurs, they have the skills to manage whatever difficulties they're having in their lives. What are some examples of these signals? Like if I were a teacher, hypothetically, in a, an elementary or middle school situation, what should I be looking for? The reality is that by the time children enter school, they should no longer be aggressive in order to get their needs met. And so if you have even a kindergartner or a first grader that is still aggressive towards other children, that is a big red flag. And those children need to be evaluated to see what are the problems in the children, in their families, and what are the skills that they need to build up in order to be able to get their needs met in a pro-social way. Why do so many of these incidents take place in schools? Schools, colleges, why does this seem to be a common occurrence? Why is that the venue of choice for the shooters? The venue of choice for shooters is schools because the majority of children, the stressors that they experience that cause the flashpoint happen in schools. Schools is a very stressful environment for these children that are having difficulty getting along with other people in the first place. And you put them in a school where there's lots of children and teachers around where they have trouble following the rules, where they're angry at teachers, they're angry at their peers. That's where the flashpoint is most likely to happen. So you're suggesting these signals are environmental from the home, environmental in the school setting. How about bullying and things like that? I think that in the case of the Columbine killers, weren't there some uh, reported incidents of bullying prior to those examples? Exactly, and bullying is a big factor, and that gives us a key as to where to look. If there are bullies in the school, what typically happens right now is the bullies get suspended. And so that is an insufficient response to bullying. Bullies, all bullies, 
need to be evaluated to see if they have just little problems that need little fixes or if they have huge complicated problems that need extensive intervention so they don't get to the point of doing something really horrible. So uh, if I understand you, bullying is really a red flag. Bullying is a red flag and we need to pay attention to bullies. Now I'm going to take that a step further. We also need to pay attention to the victims of bullies because the victims are being traumatized by the bullies. Well, what we know about violence is children that are traumatized at certain points in their lives can become bullies, bullies themselves and can be prone to violence. And so in the bullying arena, both bullies and victims need to be evaluated to see what services do they need. So this is really a vicious cycle. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we have a place to start. The second place to start is looking at the three million children in this country that are abused and neglected every year. The group of children that become violent come from the children that are identified by the Department of Social Services as abused and neglected. 60 to 70 percent of them cross over into the juvenile justice system, but the basics is that at a very young age they're abused and neglected and do not develop the skills they need to cope with the world. And so that's where we're going to identify our bullies and those at risk for violence is in the Department of Social Services.